Hi, this is Jenny from fluffmonger.com, and in this video tutorial I'll be showing how to make a variety of easy to sew face masks, including a plain front and a variety of different animals. These face masks have a curve at the top, a removable nose wire, and a filter pocket. The pattern was inspired by Homemade on Our Homestead's easy to sew pattern with no pleats. I tried a number of different face mask patterns and this one fit my face the best. It gave me a good seal on the sides and the bottom. However, I added a curved top to give a better seal at the top. And I also added a pocket for a removable wire. And then I've also made a number of different patterns for making different animal faces. To put on the mask, put the loop behind your neck at the base of your head. Then pull the strings taut until the sides are cinched to the sides of your face. Tie the string on the back of your head, and then adjust the nose wire. To make the mask, you'll need to print the pattern. All the patterns with the different animals and the plain mask are available at my website, fluffmonger.com. You'll also need scissors, pins, pins or clips, a marking tool, floral wire for the nose. If you don't have floral wire, you can also use twist ties or... Um, like a 20 gauge wire. You will also need 100% cotton fabric. Cotton fabric is breathable. For the liner pieces, you're going to definitely want to use woven fabric. And for the outside, you can either use woven fabric or a jersey fabric, which is knit fabric like t-shirts. And you will also need some sort of t-shirt yarn or clothesline or shoelaces to help tie the mask around the head. If you've never seen t-shirt yarn, it's really easy to make. I will link a tutorial in the description. You basically just find a t-shirt that doesn't have a seam on the side, and you cut a strip off the bottom. These are one inch strips, and then when you stretch the fabric, it just turns into yarn, and it's really easy. For the fabric, if you plan to sell or donate your masks, I recommend washing it in a fragrance-free detergent, not using any fabric softener or dryer sheets, and not using any spray starch. And the reason I say that is because uh, a lot of a lot of um, detergents and fabric softeners have fragrance in them, and that can be a skin respiratory irritant for some people. So if you don't know who's going to be receiving your masks, it's a good idea to just wash them in either fragrance-free detergent vinegar, or you can even make washing soda from baking baking soda in the oven. I will also link a tutorial for that because it's really easy to make. And then you may also want some sort of turning tool. I'm using hemostat clamps, but you can also use the chopstick, and you may need a seam ripper. For sewing a mask with a plain front, you're going to cut three rectangular pattern pieces using the mask liner pattern piece. And I'm going to have these two as my liner pocket colors, and then I'm going to have one different uh, print for my front. So with the right sides together, I'm going to trace my liner pocket pieces, and then I already have my front cut out, and I've already cut the bias strip for the nose. If you want to make a mask with a curved nose strip for the floral wire, you're going to want to cut some bias strips. And the way you find the bias is the fabric has a selvage edge, which usually has some print on it. And this is the finished edge that won't unravel. And you can cut your pattern pieces either this way or this way. It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. And the bias strip will be cut at a 45 degree angle. So you can either cut it this way or this way. So for sewing the nose strip, we folded our edges in and then pressed, and folded over, pressed again, and now we're going to stitch up the edges. And if you have issues with your sewing machine eating your fabric, especially with little small pieces like this, I take a little piece of paper and put it underneath. And then I just stitch over the paper. So you want to forward and back stitch at the beginning and end. And then when you pull it off, you can just cut your threads.
And then you kind of have a little perforation and you can just fold your paper back. And then you can just tear it away. Like that. And I'm gonna do the other side. And there's your nose strip. To sew the liner pocket, I'm going to take my two liner pieces and trace down the middle three inches on both sides. And then I'll take that over to the sewing machine and stitch over these two places. You want to make sure that you forward and back stitch at the beginning and end, especially a few times towards the center, because if you're opening that pocket a number of times, you want to make sure it's um, secure. And now I'm going to press it open. If you'd like for your pockets to have top stitching, you can go ahead and do that now. So we're almost to the point where we're going to attach the liner pocket to the front of the mask, but we're going to make the curved nose piece first. So you're going to line up your two pieces of fabric right sides together and take the tracing template with the curved nose. It looks like this. I've used a craft knife to cut along the inside so that I can trace both the cut line and the stitch line. And you're going to just line it up with the edge. And the reason that I do this um, now instead of cutting the fabric with that curve to begin with is because as you sew and iron your fabric, it kind of shifts around a little bit. So it's easier to just do this after you've already stitched and ironed these pieces to make sure that everything is still lined up. And so I'm just going to trace the cut line. Make sure I mark the center. And then if you want to, you can go ahead and trace the stitch line. It's not required, I just like to do it. And then you can go ahead and cut all three pieces of fabric together. And now I can go ahead and pin the nose strip to the inside of the liner piece. So I'm going to find the center of both of these and just pin it together. So now I can take this over to the sewing machine and top stitch the nose piece down. It's a good idea to forward and back stitch a few times at the ends, that way if you're taking the wire in and out a lot, it won't loosen the pocket. So now that I've top stitched the nose piece to the liner pocket, I'm going to put the front of the mask and the liner pieces together, right sides together. Then I'm going to pin them together, or clip. And I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch one quarter inch all the way around the top, the sides, and the bottom. And then when I'm ready to flip it, I can use the liner pocket for flipping. 
So now I'm going to stitch one quarter inch all the way around and I'm going to stitch along that um, stitch line that I traced at the top. This part is optional, but if you want, you can do a very narrow zigzag stitch along the outside edge of your straight stitch line. Since the woven fabric might be washed a lot, um, if you're going to be wearing the mask a lot, you, it'll just give a little bit of extra security, but it's not required. Now I'm going to clip the corners and turn it right side out. Then I'll take it over to the ironing board and press it and make sure the corners are all pressed out. You want to make sure you take your finger and run it along the inside of the seams of the curve to make sure that it completely opens up. And then you can take your hemostat clamps or your chopstick and push the corners out. So I'll take this to the ironing board. So now I've ironed my mask and I've gone ahead and folded in the sides about three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to put the cord in and stitch little loops for the um, cord to run through. So I have my t-shirt yarn. This is about 50 inches. T-shirt yarn stretches, so 50 inches should be plenty. If you want to use something that doesn't stretch, like clothesline or shoelaces, you want it to be at least 50 inches long, maybe a little bit longer. And so the, the curved nose goes at the top, and the open ends also go at the top. So open ends go at the top and then the loop will go at the bottom. So I'm just bringing this into the side. And I'm going to pin them in place. And it's a good idea to tie a little knot at the end of your string to make it harder to pull through the little loop. So you're going to have a U at the bottom, and then just bring the other end up to the top. So this is a little bit long on this side, but this is the end coming out the top. So now I'm going to top stitch about a quarter of an inch from the edge. And at the bottom and top, you'll want to forward and back stitch a few times just to make sure that it withstands a lot of use and washing. To make the nose wire that will go inside the nose pocket, you're going to take some floral wire and cut a piece about six inches long. Make sure you're wearing some safety protection for your eyes. And then you'll take a pair of pliers and bend in the end. You can bend it in either once or twice, and then you'll just kind of pinch it down until it goes in, uh, until it doesn't have any places to snag and it can go in and out smoothly for washing.
To wash your face mask, you'll want to tie your string into a knot so that it doesn't come through the loop. You want to take out your nose wire and then either wash it in a laundry bag or if you don't have a delicates bag, if you don't have one of these, you can just stuff it down into the bottom of a pillowcase and tie off the top. If you're looking for places to donate masks, consider your local refugee resettlement agencies. I'll be donating all of these to Every Campus of Refuge, which is a local agency here in Greensboro, North Carolina. You can find the pattern and tutorial for this mask on my website. I've included a link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button and the subscribe button for my YouTube channel. You can find me and my fluffy friends at fluffmonger.com and on social media.